over next uh, 60 minutes, we'll go over uh, a great life transmission uh, from uh, King Faisal Specialty Hospital um, uh, in Jeddah. The operator will be Dr. Nabil Ismail and Dr. Umar Al-Amin. Nabil, how are you doing? No, no, you might have a Good, good, Fawad. How are you? Good. So we'll start our session. We have a great uh, panelist with me and, um, and full room to watching you. So kindly introduce your team and, and tell us about the case. Hi, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for the organizing committee of uh, the GIS Val uh, for involving us in this uh, transmission. Is there an echo there? We can hear you nicely. Yeah, okay. Um, so uh, we will... Uh, uh, let's start with uh, with our team here at Interface Special Hospital. So uh, with me is Dr. Umar Al-Amin, Dr. Ahind al asayami our interventional cardiologist. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Al-Rifai uh, is our cardiac surgeon. Uh, Dr. Uh, Faizan Zia and Dr. Iqbal from Anesthesia. And with us, uh, Imad is our radiographer, Ibrahim is our uh, CVT, Mohammed Al Malki and Wissam are our nurses. Uh, we have uh, Suzette and Amira also our nurses here, circulating nurse. We have uh, Shahad Al Sharif from, uh, from Medtronic. We have Ahmed Takruni from uh, Boston Scientific. So, uh, we will, uh, we will get with the case presentation. Put up the presentation, please. Do you see our screen? We don't see yet the slides. We can see you nicely and the patient. So can, you, can you pull up the, the slides, please? You see it now? Um, yes, we can see it. You see our slides? We can see the slide with the live case transmission and your names. Can okay. you just... Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, let's get started. Next. With your help, please. So our patient is a 52-year-old male. Uh, he had a lymphoma treated with multiple cycles of chemotherapy and radiation therapy between the age of 3 and 17 years. Um, he is currently in remission. Uh, he has also type 2 diabetes, an oral hypoglycemic agent. He has uh, dyslipidemia, he's an ex-smoker. He was diagnosed with coronary artery disease. Uh, he was treated with mid-cap, minimal invasive uh, Lima to LAD in 2016. He also had a right hip replacement for avascular necrosis in 2014. And he had a gastric sleeve surgery in 2017 where he, after that he, he lost around uh, 40 kilos. He also had a uh, right internal iliac artery stent in 2020. Uh, he started to complain of progressive shortness of breath over the last year. Uh, currently, he's in YHA class 3. Uh, no history of chest pain, syncope, or palpitation. His physical exam, uh, vital signs within normal. He has a normal uh, first heart sound, soft uh, second heart sound, and a systolic ejection murmur radiates to the carotid. His chest was clear, no JVD, and no lower limb edema. Main or basic uh, investigations were within normal limits including uh, creatinine. Next. So this is his ECG. It shows the sinus rhythm with first degree AP block. That's normal QRS duration. Next. Uh, so this is the short axis that delivers of the aortic valve. He has a heavily calcified aortic valve. Next. And uh, there is a, a mild uh, left ventricular uh, hypertrophy. It's eccentric. Uh, sorry, it's concentric LVH. Next. So this is a short axis. Shows you the mild uh, concentric LVH. No regional wall motion abnormality, and ejection fraction is 50 to 55 percent. Next. So his LVOT uh, diameter is 2.06 centimeters. Next. 
LVOT VTI is 23.6 centimeters. Next. And uh, the mean pressure gradient is 44 with a Vmax of, of 4.2 and calculated valve area of 7.8 uh, square centimeters. 0.78. 0 0 0.78. Next. Yeah. So he had mild MS and mild uh, AI. Next. Next. So he had a multidisciplinary team uh, approach. Uh, he underwent a, a selective coronary angiography, which showed the patent theme at LAD. He had a, a significant focal stenosis in the proximal ramus. And the plan was to go to take him, given his age, to take him for mechanical uh, saver gap to the ramus intermediate. Next. So he underwent a sternotomy. However, the ascending aorta was heavily calcified which made it impossible to cross clamp. As a result, uh, the chest was closed, and he was referred to us uh, for further management. So when we, when we uh, uh, approached, uh, he, he actually was referred to us last week. We did a CT, uh, next. next. So the, uh, this is the, his uh, coronary, uh, the cardiac CT. Uh, as you see here, it's a tri-leaflet tri aortic valve, heavily calcified, with a calcium score of uh, excess of uh, 4,000. He has a porcelain aorta. Next. Uh, the annulus uh, 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 average diameter is 24.8 and perimeter uh, between 75 to 79. Next. So coronary height, the left coronary is 11.7. Next. So just to show you the uh, tubular junction height is 25 and his membranous uh, septum length is 7.2. And you can see here that there is an uh, LVOT calcification extending uh, from the aortic valve down to the, to the LVOT. Next. This is his peripheral, so the right iliac has uh, a stent. Uh, but with a minimum diameter and the uh, LU femoral of 5 millimeter and uh, left uh, LU femoral minimum diameter of 6 millimeter. Next. His uh, Lima to LAD is patent. Next. This is his um, uh, parotids with, uh, with the aortic arch. As you see here, the aortic uh, uh, diameter is 13 millimeter. And the uh, left common carotid is 10 millimeters. Next. Okay. So this is, uh, this is where I, I want you guys uh, from the panel and uh, uh, the moderator, if you, if you guys can uh, uh, entertain the, these uh, issues and uh, procedural uh, uh, points. So uh, uh, is it going to be ge under general anesthesia or procedural sedation? Uh, is it indicated to revascularize the ramus? Although we didn't show an image of that, it's just a proximal uh, uh, focal lesion. Uh, what platform we should they use and which size and uh, axis? Should we use cerebral uh, protection device? Should we consider predilation and the closure device? Great. Uh, that, that's a great question. To us. Yeah, that's a great. Thank you very much, Nabil. It's a great overview of the case. And, and you already uh, uh, put us in a great uh, question that to be answered. So we'll just take it one by one. So can you put the slide again? We can see. Okay, it's there. So maybe we we'll start with, uh, with our panelists here. So Dr. Abdullah uh, uh, I will I will jump into the uh, platform and, and sizing uh, uh, for you. Uh, Self-expandable versus uh, bone expandable. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, <clears throat> I have to say this is a really uh, high-risk procedure. The, this case's anatomy is very bad. I mean, the patient went for an open heart and they closed him back. So that tells you much about the risk of this patient. I think there is a price to pay with each device you use. I mean, we saw the uh, degree of calcifications on the leaflets and we saw subannular calcification. So if you use a balloon expandable, you risk annular rupture in this case. Yeah. And if you use a self-expandable, you risk some paravalvular leak. So if I had to choose, I would go with a self-expandable uh, uh, valve, except a little bit of paravalvular leak, understanding that ca that could happen. And I would have a high threshold to post-dilate. If it's mild paravalvular leak, I would, I would leave it. Uh, without pre -dilatation. I would pre-dilate, but undersized balloon, just to make sure that the self-expandable valve will open. Great. 
Dr. Adel, he already uh, took the patient open the chest, there is calcium. Do you think a routine uh, CT prior to any uh, 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 surgery, either cabbage or, or valve, will decrease the, uh, the chances of doing this? Uh, yeah, definitely. Before opening the chest, uh, yeah, having a look at the ascending aorta and the calcification, we know that, uh, that he, this is an, an arteriopath patient. He has many um, uh, lesions, peripherally and centrally. Um, he has a heavily calcified aortic valve. Uh, the angio, we did not see the angio. Probably the angio would have given us a hint that uh, there is a porcelain aorta or parts of the aorta that we are going to access for the cross clamp or for the cannulation would be calcified. And uh, that would have uh, saved the patient a journey to the operating theater and uh, opening a, a redo sternotomy. No, he had a med cap before, but opening open the sternotomy and, and doing um, uh, some dissection to the aorta. That, uh, yani, the, the uh, having an idea about the calcification would have uh, saved the patient and, that journey. And just a quick, uh, quick follow-up question to this. So, given that the patient has a lima, should the CT be done anyways, just to see where the lima is? Definitely, yes. yes. I would. Yeah. I would. In, do in a our center, time. CT becoming a routine for any patient going to surgery, either cabbage or or, or uh, uh, valves. No, especially and, for the lima to see where is the yeah. position of the lima wh exactly. while you're opening. Uh, Doctor Hassam, he asked about cerebral protection device. What, what's your take? I think this question came on again and again, but this is a specific uh, scenario. Probably it's a case I would say consider putting a uh, protection device. I don't do that routinely, but a case like this, young man with heavily calcification, right. Uh, right. it's a different story. So you'll go with the cerebral protection device. Dr. Salah Shlash, the access, what do you recommend? Um, I think it would be a femoral radial, that's our standard. Um, uh, unless you're going to use a cerebral protection, then it's going to be bifemoral. Okay. Dr. Salah Al-Ghadir, you already talked about a vascular closure. You'll go with one proglide or, or um, you'll try the new Manta? Yeah, um, I will try with the Manta um, 2 proglide. Uh, okay, so proglide here will be, will, will be fine. Dr. Hamid? Being young, a patient, uh, 52, uh, they cannot do, do him. I, I think it's uh, in the future you are worried about the coronary uh, 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 access. In, any problem at this time? Well, certainly the age, uh, per se, for this patient is a concern. But we look at the patient as a whole, probably is not that. So we look at the physiological age of that patient is probably beyond 55. So I, I wouldn't, you know, uh, pay excessive attention to that. And I think the platform that would suit his anatomy probably will take precedence for me over the just mere number of his age, which is 55. But yes, you know, um, the lucky thing that he has Lima, which is a source of reassurance to me, that, that would uh, yeah. so forgive me. Great. So, uh, I don't know, you hear that, uh, just, Dr. Nabil? Uh, 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 there's just one important thing. I think for the closure device with this degree of calcification, you know, half an access to the peripheral is important. So probably for me, uh, um, uh, seal sort of thing probably would not my first choice. I would still would go with, with uh, the tool that would allow me to get access in case of any complication. Yeah. So it's going to be a, a suggestion from panelists to uh, uh, you go femoral, uh, cerebral protection device, and uh, pre-dilatation, not a, with a big size balloon, and you go with a self-expandable uh, balloon. So tell us what you are planning and what's your strategy. Uh, so it's uh, it's really a fruitful discussion, and uh, I think we are in line with uh, all uh, our esteemed panelists' uh, suggestions. So we did the procedure as our usual uh, with the procedural sedation, uh, monitored uh, anesthesia care, Mac. and uh, so the, we uh, we we decided to go for bifemoral approach since the patient has a stent uh, on the right iliac. We decided to go with the left uh, femoral for our device, and for the pigtail, we'll go from the right femoral. Uh, again, because of the degree of calcification in the valve, we decided to, uh, uh, we expected that there would be some debris during our procedure, so uh, a cerebral protection device uh, uh, probably would, would help in preventing uh, disabling stroke in this patient. And uh, we, uh, after we, we obtained uh, the access, we gave the patient heparin, a standard protocol. We kept his ACT above 250. Um, Roberto, can you show us uh, the video, where we, what we have done so far? 
So we obtain a bifemoral approach. You can see the video, uh, Fawaz? Uh, yeah, we can see the, the skin of the patient. Is that what you're trying to show us? Oh, the video, video. No, now we can see something coming. Just to play it. Yeah, the play, uh, Roberto. So we're planning to go left femoral, right? Left femoral. So we got an ultrasound guided uh, access to the, from the right uh, femoral uh, as well as the left femoral. The left femoral was our uh, site for, uh, for uh, procedure. This is our cerebral protection device. We just deployed it uh, 15 minutes ago. So we covered uh, the innominate and the left common carotid. And uh, so this is deploying the distal. Uh, so we obtained uh, uh, a pressure gradient. The mean pressure gradient here was uh, calculated as uh, 52. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Hind and Dr. Muhammad to uh, proceed with uh, with the valve deployment. So we will. Uh, yeah, we have to we have to pre dilate. Okay. I, I think I think I think it's difficult to come back again. So let's just do that. Pre dilate. Pre dilate? No, I don't. Think so you already at the level. We already have only axis in the left femoral and right femoral. Uh, do, do yes, we, we already have that. Do you do it, uh, or you put a TBM, or you depend on 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 your uh, LBI? No, so we use in our in uh, in our practice for the last few months, we are using the LV wire to uh, uh, to uh, 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 rapidly pace if indicated, and we secure an IJ axis just in case if the patient develops any conduction abnormality, we will throw a temporary wire there after the procedure. Okay. Uh, so we actually have our. Uh, uh, our, we, we were discussing the pre-dilation. Uh, in fact, we have the balloon here. We were planning to, uh, we, it's, uh, it's back and forth with the pre-dilator or not, but we felt that actually the uh, commissures were not fused. Calcium was mainly in the, in the cusps. So um, uh, we wanted to go and just deploy the valve and see how it, how it expands and then probably go for a post-dilation if indicated. The radial force of this valve is, is great in overcoming the uh, significant uh, uh, stenosis. Do you see our feed in a uh, Yes, we can, see we can see it. So you already crossed the valve, right? We crossed the valve. Yeah. What's, our, your, uh, what's your size here with the valve? Can you see our floor? Can you see the floor? We do. Oh, just a second. Tell me, go back, go back to the presentation. 29. 29. What is the size of the valve here? Yeah, yeah just uh, let me show you the presentation here. You see the presentation? No. Uh, Dr. Mohammed al Atabi has a comment here. You see the presentation? The heart marker in the descending aorta should be on the right side. So that when you curve up, you get the heart on the greater curvature. So you just ensure, uh, Dr. Nabil, you ensure that, that uh, probably the flush port are three. I think this is important before you go up. Yeah, it is, it is at three o'clock. When we uh, went with the valve, it's at three o'clock. So uh, are, do you see our slide? Yes, we can see it. You see our slide? No pre No. What is uh, the point I would, here? I would have pre -dilated. Yeah, for us, do you see our slide? We can see your slide, yes. Yeah, go next. Next. So according to the parameter, so with the self-expanding valve, usually we go with the parameter. So this patient's uh, parameter was uh, between 75 to 79. So we will go with the, uh, with the Evolute Pro Plus size 29. OK, let's go for the, for the floor. Do you see our floor uh, for once? Yes. So, why don't you just go ahead and, and, uh, and, and do it? Then we'll make a discussion around it. Sure. So you're going to select, uh, uh, I guess, 29 valve. So we need the floor. We have a comment from Faisal. Eh? For the panel, uh, we leave, the, leave the operator to work. Uh, the calcified Rafi and uh, heavily calcified, how many of you would pre-delete this valve? Uh, then again, I think there is no penalty to pre-delating this valve, especially with a sentinel device. 
Um, however, I think this is one of the perks of using the self-expanding platform, uh, meaning if it's, it's more forgiving. So if you actually deploy the valve, um, you can recapture it and rechange in the plan. But I would pre-dilate. I guess the penalty every time you pre-dilate, you risk a stroke, and he has cerebral protection. And you, there is always a risk you're going to induce severe AI, but I, I would pre-dilate given the heavy calcifications. But I will make sure I use undersized balloon. Yeah, so I, I guess their, their plan there, they just deploy the valve and see what, what's going to happen, and, and then putting a pressure more of post dilatation if needed. Yes. And you're going to do it in a cusp overlap. Uh, can you hear us, uh, Nabil? Yeah, so the cusp overlap was uh, 27. RAO codal 17. So we got it at 2720. Can you, can you in, inject, please? Test here, am I? Um, sorry. Connected? Yeah, yes. injected. <clears throat> Just, uh, we're connecting to the injector here. Careful. So do you notice that nowadays we see more bicuspid or functional bicuspid with calcium? Do you think the cradle of breed dilatation will make a huge difference in these cases? I think so. And I think part of the patient's history is the lymphoma. He might get radiation uh, exposure as part of the therapy. And that would give you a lot of calcifications in the ostia of the coronaries, as well as the anterior uh, valves, in this case, aortic valve. So yes, you, you, you will see that more commonly. Okay. Yeah, let's, we're starting the line of this. Are you planning to do a do semi so we can see the uh, alignment of the valve? So, so let's do a inject, yes. Sending. Inject. Okay. Yes. So our our target is going to be a depth of probably three to five millimeters. Who thinks this depth is is okay? So we'll start at, at this level, and uh, then uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes as, uh, as it will self-center. Dr. Saad, slash. I think it's on the deeper side. Uh, so if you start at this position, you'll have to keep some back tension. I would actually pull it now prior to starting deployment. I guess another problem, if you don't pre-dilate, you'll notice that every time you open the valve, it might tend to, do, to dive, dive in. And we make it difficult to position. But I think it's on the little bit on the deeper side. You want to start a little bit higher yeah. to compensate for that. So there is a, almost semi consensus that it's a, it's a bit deep, so you need to pull it back a bit. So let, uh, okay. So usually we, yeah, just pull the, the down a little bit up. That's it. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay, let's start here and then we descend as we go. So yeah, let's start uh, deploying. Start the plan. Hamid, start. Okay. So maintain that. This. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm in a small injection at this level to see where you are. Yeah, test, test the arm. Expert, little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's it, yes. Okay, let it flare and see. Yeah. What's, what's the heart rate of the patient now? We didn't see the hemodynamic. And uh, 60. Heart rate is 60. So you don't want to base? Yes. So that's deep, that's too deep. 
That's too deep. So recapture key. I think it's just dive in more. Yes, we need, we need to, probably we need to face, guys. Yes, it should be uh, Dr. Ahmed al Shatti has a comment here. Okay, good. So let's test, test the pacemaker, guys. Are we connected? Yeah, Ibrahim? Ibrahim? Let's test the pacemaker. One thing to note though, the sinus is, uh, is very calcified and the pectial is not touching the sinus. So the sinus is actually deeper where than the where is the pectil is. So there is at least one millimeter difference between the sinus and the pectil. So do you think the pectil is not at the level of no, the anus? No, it's not. The, you, can, you can see that there is like a shelf of calcification between the leaflets and the, and the, and the, and the sinus. So the, Nabil, there is a comment here that your, your pectil is not at the level of the, of the annulus. Um, yeah, so the picture, because of the heavy calcification in the cusps, uh, I, I, it is higher than the, the lower end of the cusps. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think in this specific patient, I'm, if I go with the co-planner, it can be, can be a, a good option. Um, I don't think in the uh, uh, cusp of a lab hair or commercial alignment, you can, you can see it appropriately. Dr. Jindi? So, great work so far, guys. I mean, there are two things. One, I love how the hat marker is center front because this guy is young. He already has coronary disease, so preserving future coronary access is great. So that's uh, one lucky thing that without, without a lot of maneuvering, the hat marker is center front. The second thing, we haven't predilated. This is a post-radiation type of AS, so there's a lot of calcium and a lot of leaflet fibrosis. One way to deal with this, because you'll probably, every time you try to deploy the valve, it will tend to watermelon into the LV. So one thing is to start flaring relatively deep, then pull back. We don't usually like doing this because it, it can induce some trauma to the bundle, but sometimes that's the only way. Just flare it a bit, withdraw everything when it's partially flared, and this is the only way you can really reach a secure position. I, th I think just further to this comment, even at the same position that they achieved, which was relatively low, I think if they kept going with a lot of negative uh, tension on the device, uh, I think probably they would have been able to achieve a three to four millimeter uh, depth. I'm not no pressures. No pressures. So I actually been in a similar situation and, and, and I had to pull the valve out and then reinsert the sheath and just pre-dilate. I mean, it's never a bad idea to change your mind if this first uh, strategy doesn't work. Yeah, and uh, with the self-expandable, I think that can be uh, done easily. Uh, uh. Start, uh, so start uh, pacing at 140. Pace at 140. Yes, I agree with uh, Dr. Nabil. Start basing from now at 140 and build the valve a little bit, uh, uh, one or two millimeters, and start deploying completely. Of course, this position is good. You will stay on the cusp of our lab here? Yeah, yeah, I will stay in the cusp of our lab, and this position is good. What to add? Just start basing at 140. Keep it at 140 from zero time and maintain the wire distal. Maintain the wire to, co to, com to, con to stabilize the valve for you. Yeah, here you go. So we'll try this. If it doesn't work, I think it's pre-dilatation is, is, uh, is the way to go. Uh, if, if I was, if I might add something. You know, one of the issues of a lack of pre-dilatation, you just, you don't know how much you gauge your push and pull because the friction will be so high. That will make it difficult actually for very accurate uh, positioning. Uh, here is, is not bad. Uh, off pacer. Let's see. Ready, ready to inject. Uh, let's see. Just a second. We have we have a parallax here. So uh, floor, floor, we are here. Give me, give me more caudal, more caudal. Shall we keep floor? Why do the parallax? Come on, more caudal. We have a lot of parallax. Good. Okay. So let's uh, dry sini. Let's dry sini. Sorry. Yeah. Let's inject here. Inject. Our tips, what do you guys think? Let's go to the co planner view. I, I will go to the co planner to see it. Yeah, so co planner is going to be AP, straight AP.
So play, uh, so floor here. Give me more code, more code just to get rid of the parallel. And I think your system has a lot of tension. You may. Uh, yeah. Yes. Fine. Uh, release the yes. wire. Yes. Okay. Five. Yalla, inject here. No, no. Uh, so I think from three to five millimeter depth, uh, as as we planned ahead, probably we are okay here. I'm personally, I think it's it's okay. Although I, I feel there is a lot of tension, so we have to be careful with the final release that that you, uh, you apply tension not to. Pull we'll do back. it with, uh, without the spacing so, as well. So, panelists, who think that it's it's uh, need to be uh, recaptured or or it's good position? Um, I would not recapture. I'd release, but uh, it really needs to stay in place. So the wire, I think, should be pulled back and the deployment should be matched with forward pressure so that it does not uh, migrate up. Other panelist is a good, a good position here. Hamid, you agree? You know, I think at this stage, a second trial with this, I think I would go for it. I think I'll be happy with it. Okay. So, no objection. All the people are happy. Hussain Al-Amri has a comment. Yeah. 27, yeah. 27, 20. I think it's a little bit low, and once you release it with the tension on the valve, it will auto-correct and uh, dive deeper. I will uh, re recapture and I will uh, try to uh, uh, deploy it at a higher point, because once you release, it will dive in. We take a comment from uh, saying so seriously. So who going to recapture again? We have, a, we have a, a good number of seniors they would like to recapture. I'll say the opposite view. I wouldn't recapture for two reasons. One, this you is would. a calcified root. Chances of this migrating is very limited. It's actually going to be anchored both at the annular, at the leaflet, and at the root level. Second point, there's a good chance that we might post delay. So you want a safety margin here. If it's the second release, I, I would go for it and release. I, I totally agree. I was about to say that you're going to post the late. You need yeah. it, uh, that five millimeter down. Second thing is you might redo. And uh, lower is better for redo for, for, for uh, uh, supranular. So we are divided here between recapture and release. Um, I'm staying here as a, uh, as a chairman. I will, I will, my opinion is to release it. But be attention, be attention to the uh, attention in the system. Yeah, Just I agree. I mean, both arguments, uh, they are very uh, solid arguments. But uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and release under uh, fast pacing shocks. OK, so let's uh, pace as there is a suggestion to put a rabbit basing while you are releasing it. Rapid yeah, push the wire. And pull the wire. To capture it. Eh? Yeah. No, 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 pull the wire back. La, capture the uh, uh, Keep okay. tension on the system. Go, go to 180. Forward tension. <laughs> 180, uh, Ibrahim. Good. Okay, so let's start releasing. Yalla, Bismillah. Ala mahlab, ya Muhammad. I think the wire should be pulled back. Yes, go ahead. Go With the forward back. tension, please. Yes. Muhammad. Yes. Huh? Great job. Completely. Continue. Off pacer. Off pacer. Yeah. Complete, yes. Excellent, great. Yeah. Awesome. Of floral. Floral sleep back. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's, a, it's a, good, a good position. We are almost like five millimeter below the annulus. So be sure that you are released completely. Yeah, it is released. So let's bring the, the device in the descending aorta. Yeah. It's a great demonstration of a difficult uh, uh, deployment with the multiple factors. Okay. Bring the device into the descending aorta. Yellow. Bring the gray into blue. Gray into gray into the blue. And I think that this is a very good uh, 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 
important lesson for everybody that we, we already have multiple opinion from a different operators. And if you know how to handle it very well with the minor technical issue, you can always get away with a lot of stuff. Let's say. Uh, now your big tail is uh, jailed, so it's, uh, just be careful when you pull it back because ill people are uh, looking for uh, the uh, our to ground to see the. Is it possible to yeah. see his AKG? Do we have AKG? an narrow QRS? I'm wondering about the ECG. What's it? I'm wondering if we ha still have a narrow QRS on the ECG. So show us the. Uh, can you show us the video here? In the can we see the hemodynamic, uh, uh, Nabil? Can I see the monitor? We need the uh, hemodynamic to just to be sure that. Uh, yeah, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. That looks like. Okay. Okay. Is this a new changes? So the QRS is a little bit wider. Okay. Good. Hold on. So let's bring it down to the top. Just a second. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, take this out. Right. Great. Got it? Give me, give me a... So now you see it changes, it looks like a, 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 a... I cannot see it very well, but it's a bundle branch block. Uh, do you keep the TBM, uh, Saleh, you ask about it? Uh, no, I think if the conduction is one-to-one, -one, uh, then uh, we, our standard is to actually remove the... Uh, TPM wire. Right. Flash, we never do right flash. atrial pacing because I think it's a bad idea. Huh? But uh, uh, we huh? definitely keep them. Uh, we might keep the sheath in place. We uh, are just more worried about this particular patient. Meaning, if we just watch Give them closely, Ariel, uh, Sorry, Ariel, uh, just Ariel, they might stay actually in hospital for two days. Our standard is to send patient the next day. The left bundles we might keep them for an extra day. Do you keep a TBM to tell them? Um, you know, you have to take no. into consideration no. the procedural results. So this is a deeper uh, implantation for sure. So oh, higher product. risk of conduction delay. And it's a self-expandable device, which means it can continue to expand. And exactly. the, the conduction problems can be delayed as opposed to the balloon expandable, where it's worse at the de deployment and it can get uh, better. So I think to, to, to say the least, this patient needs to be monitored at least for 48 hours and potentially do a halter in a week after discharge. Okay. Are you planning to do a watergram to see the, uh, the depth yes, of... Yes, we will do it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah keep it at 600. Um, also, one more thing, uh, Dr. Fawaz, is about just monitoring these patients. So if you're sending your TAVI patients to a, a floor or a step-down mm -hmm. unit, then maybe your left bundle patients should go to a higher uh, unit. Uh, all our patients go to the CCU, well, uh, so our response time in the event bundle? of complete heart block is going to be more very, bundle? very short. You know, we, we always would like to implant self-expandable higher to avoid conduction delay, but I think in a younger person like this where you're thinking about the future for lifetime management, it's not a bad to have it on the lower side so you can do a valve and valve in the future. Ready? Yes. And um, yes. personally, with any new conduction uh, problem in, during yes. the procedure, I keep a TBM for at least 24 hours, uh, uh, then reassess. Yalla, ready? Yeah, let's can we make the screen of our program bigger Ready? so we can see it? Can you? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Uh, oh, well done. Yalla. Sani, inject. So there is AI. So we have to post dilate now. Uh, it looks like big, yeah. Or what do you think? Hmm. Yeah, Dr. Hassan. Uh, just the, I mean, even before the aortogram, I think you can see at the middle uh, frame of the valve there is some waste in there. So, uh, so I, and then the other thing which we didn't have is the hemodynamics uh, after the intervention. So we look at the AR and AR index that we do routinely. Great, but I think it's obviously need need post dilatation with this. Um, ha Dr. Hamid, uh, the sizing of the balloon for post dilatation, what do you recommend here? Well, first, I think um, this is absolutely a case for post dilatation. Um, also, I can see it towards the uh, uh, left cusp that probably I'm folding. That's uh, another reason to do it. And size, um, so it's 29. I think probably go with 23, 24. Can you prepare 23 uh, balloon? 
What, which size do you select, uh, Nabil? We are going for 23. I think doing hemodynamics before and after is very, very crucial in assessment of AR. And one of the things I like to check is the LVEDP. I think if the LVEDP doesn't change significantly, that argues against significant AR. The other point is that having significant paravalvular leak doesn't necessarily mean uh, you need to post-dilate. Sometimes the mechanism of a paravalvular leak, because the valve is too high or too low, and no matter how much you post-dilate, it might not work, and you need to put a, a tabby and tabby in this situation. So just to keep that in mind. Yeah. So why, we have, yeah, for post dilatation, we have two, two, two important things. Number one, this is 29, so the size of the waist is 23, so you shouldn't exceed 23. Number two, you look to the mean of the annulus, of the LV, and the annulus. You don't want to injure the annulus, so you have to take into consideration these two variables. So you need to know about the annulus, minimal and mean diameter of the annulus. I, th I think the minimum was around minimum, 23. The minimum something. diameter was 20, and the mean was 23. So our plan, if we want to... I think a 20, size 23 is, is reasonable in this situation. Ibrahim? So you are planning to do post dilatation now, Nabil? We're going to have to post dilate uh, under okay. the... I think post dilatation, then you do hemodynamic assessment by putting an, an, an orthogram in the LV, or the sorry, big tail in the LV. Two. Well, significant. I think a great case so far. Very really generated a lot of discussion, but I think it's very important before you make a lot of choices is to get your hemodynamics right. Have a baseline LVDP. Part of the AI here is clearly due to the wire, but also the valve, uh, as Dr. Hassan pointing out, is constrained. The important message for all the operators is for each size valve for the Medtronic, there is a maximum balloon size that corresponds to the waist. I don't, I don't remember it on top of my head. In my cath lab, I have it as a table. But for example, for each size valve, you cannot exceed the waist of the valve. So I do not know exactly what is it for a 20. Uh, nine, I'm assuming it's a 23 millimeter valve. You could go with a smaller balloon because it's a heavily calcified annulus. Uh, you don't want to over, uh, you really, you don't want to risk uh, having an annular rupture. I, I think, just Faisal, at the same time, you really don't want to go with a too, too small of a balloon, then you end up doing two post dilatation balloons. So I, I agree with just sizing to the mean of the annulus. So I would use a, a semi compliant 23 millimeter or an ultra non-compliant minus one millimeter. So if it's an Atlas Gold, I would use a 22. If it's just a regular post valvular plastic balloon, I would use a 23. The balloon size inside is 23, Nabil, right? It's 23 by 40. Okay. Reading here now. We'll see what's going on. Okay, uh, Ibrahim. Omar. Fix this. Muhammad, fix this. Hold, you fix that. Omar, fix the wire. Fix the wire, and I will uh, bring the. Pull, pull the wire, pull the balloon, show you. Push the wire. We should have a good contact with the LV. Good, that's it. Hey, okay. Ibrahim. Can you start, start facing at 180? I need to see the monitor here. Different. Yeah. Okay. He's not he's smart. smart. He's fucking smart. Two level. Nice. Okay. Pacemaker down. Off. Facing off, Ibrahim. Thank you. already went up. It looks expanded. That waste that you mentioned is gone. It's okay. Okay. Oh, do we have? <laughs> Let's bring it down here. Let's repeat our. It's okay. So let's uh, let's uh, inject now. So ready to inject? Looking at the valve, look like it's already opened. Right. 
So I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure now we can evaluate it in better shape. Maybe the big tail, if you just pull it up a bit, a orthogram, then definitely I will do hemodynamic assessment, right? Sometimes, you know, if the wire is, uh, is going through the valve, you get uh, some AI. So uh, let's see here. I would call for a trans echo as well to give us yeah. more information while waiting for the aortic root. Yeah. Just a second. Yeah. 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 Ready to inject? Yeah. Sini. Sini. Inject. It, it may be a central with the wire. I will do hemodynamic assessment at this level, and definitely echo gonna help help you more. Yeah, can we get the Tra echo? echo. Sometimes I find putting a catheter instead of the stiff wire uh, in the LV causes less regurgitation if it's if, if it's transvalvular. They think there's significant paravalvular leak for sure. Was pulled out. I, I think yeah. it was intention. I thought you're going to exchange the uh, LV wire with the big tail. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. If we have to uh, go for uh, post dilation, well, we just need to, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, self expanding, it will keep uh, expanding here, but we know the mechanism. Uh, now we, uh, we know that probably there are two mechanisms here. First yeah, one was uh, the wire, so central uh, AI, and the other one is the heavy cusp in the LVOT, uh, uh, which might take. So now but we have uh, no wire. We can just repeat the orthogram and let's see it. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ready to. Yeah, let's see. Inject. I think uh, echo will be crucial here. It will, will tell us exactly what yeah. is it, where is location. Yeah. Okay, so th there is a, uh, there is aortic regurg, is it, uh, uh, most likely it's a baravarvar leak. What's the mechanism? It's, we didn't know. Maybe it's because of the valve is a bit deep or because of the, of the calcium. So what what your next waiting for echo echo will tell us a bit more information. Yeah, echo will, echo will provide some guidance why there is significant paravalvular leak because we have options. It's not always a knee reflex that you post dilate because if if the valve is too high or is too low and you have the skirt is not covering, post dilate is not going to help. So you need to put ta uh, valve in valve. In some situations, which could be in this case, if you have a lot of nodular calcium and that's something you can anticipate from the CT. You have two nodular calcium, you'll never have a perfect seal. And in this rare situation, you, need, you might need to put a plug to, to occlude the, the paravalvular leak. Oh, if, I was, if you can look inside the valve, there is, you know, flickering shadow. You know, it, it just looks suspicious. I don't know if it has something to do with the uh, regurg. You can see it in the mid section. That's a bit unusual. I, um, so I think echo here would, uh, you know, give you a good idea, very good idea, something even TE e if need be. Sorry, um, sorry. Just some, something I find it useful. Do panoramic view. Do from RAO to the LAO uh, screening and then save it and review it. You will see: is there double barrel? Is there a localized compression from a calcium nodule? I think this gives you an insight of the of the frame. Uh, of, of the of the prosthesis itself, and I think echo is fine to just assess. This is the good thing about this case is that this is a primed left ventricle. This means that the, the, there is no only absolute aortic stenosis component. There is a component of mitral of aortic incompetence, mm -hmm. and this does doesn't tend to left the LVEDP and cause acute AI. So it's a primed ventricle. It might tolerate a moderate degree of AI. Great. Dr. Adel, do you think in it? I think, uh, of course, we have to wait uh, for this self-expandable valve. It might expand more and the regurg might decrease. But uh, uh, if it does not, then uh, one of the solutions uh, from the surgical point of view that the patient does still have a door for surgery. The, the porcelain aorta is not uh, really circumferential. 
and uh, there are there is part of the arch or the early arch where uh, just before the the carotid where we can put a cross clamp we can cannulate peripherally his peripheral vessels are um, are decent um, and um, uh, you know, do, do a surgical uh, surgical valve replacement. And I think the most crucial information here, what is the, et, uh, the etiology of this paravalvular leak? And understanding it, that will guide us to manage it. Panoramic view, again, will tell us about the shape of the, of the valve. Uh, echo is, a, again, very important here. And I think echo will give us the final, final answer or where to go. Yeah. Any other suggestions? It would be yeah. nice, actually, to, he, to see his hemodynamics. It's, from the looks of it, it looks actually he's not tachycardic, so probably and geographically looks significant, but it's not that significant, right? Um, it would be nice to know his heart rate and his blood pressure at this stage. Um, We're um, doing, uh, yeah. me and who is being uh, uh, dirt. We'll do a simultaneous pressure just to see the LV, uh, LVDP. See how bad the AI is. Are you preparing to do echo, uh, Nabil? Yeah, yeah, we called for the echo. Okay. okay. And it? injection in LAO and the echo will be helpful to us, but I think we all know the mode of failure here. This has nothing to do with the depth. The depth is appropriate. The skirt definitely covers uh, the uh, PVL here. The issue here is that the valve does not have enough radial force to push the calcified leaflets that had been irradiated. So I think just if you're going to do any further interventions, it's going to be more ballooning, uh, better, longer time. But, uh, but this has nothing If you look at the balloon, which size 23, which is a big size and for this valve, it's already will expand it. So, sure. Dr. Hassan, do you want to go more, more sizing? Yeah, I mean, I will, yeah. as, as Mohammed said, uh, TBs, I will, because sometimes in one, in one projection it looks okay, the other projections still have the dent on the stent frame. And I mean, what, before putting in another valve, as Abdullah said, I would probably go maybe 23 with an extra, a little bit of extra volume, do simultaneous try to seal it. And I think this brings up to the, the question is, pr like what we do in coronary space, is the prevention is the better than the cure. And then we uh, discussed about the pre-dilatation before the implant. That was one issue. And I think there are technologies that they may come in the near future in which you actually excise the valve percutaneously and What's you implant that? the valve in. That's one. And then the shockwave component uh, therapy, you do balloon with a shockwave for these kind of yeah. valves. Yeah so that would prevent this thing happening. So these are the things to look for in the next few years to come. You can actually excise the one complete part of the valve excision percutaneously and then you plan the other valve. Uh, excellent comments. I mean, this is uh, one beautiful side of life cases, the real life scenarios. A few comments. One, from the surgical standpoint, it's just because we do a lot of surgeries in post-radiation patients. One way, you fix that is rather than cross clamping is putting in a balloon and then you can deliver your plesia you have a balloon rather than a clamp and even in fully calcified roots you can still do that safely the second point this is a scenario where i would really hate to put a second valve because he's very young the chances of requiring a taver and taver and taver down the line is high so I hope you guys are getting in both the ECHO and the TE probe because I think it's going to be nodular calcification or a saber tooth type of calcification where a plug is eventually going to be the solution. But we really yeah, need to see uh, a good image. So, sorry, Ahmed, uh, you, you said you would or you would not? I would not Any want to put in a second yeah. valve. Yeah. And I would really consider a plug okay. if we see a very discrete type of, of leakage. Okay, perfect. We can see the hemodynamic now. I mean, if you look at the LVDP here, there is no, uh, uh, the EDP is around 20, uh, but uh, it's probably higher. Yeah. LV is dipping, and it's not uh, the yes. So the pressure gradient has been uh, almost. Can we calculate uh, the AR index here? Yeah. Um, I think the line the may not be zero great. as well. So I think the gradient is actually uh, higher than this. I think the LV line is not equal. It's kind of dipping below zero. So I think once they equalize the two lines, the pressure gradient will even look higher. So I, I think that's that. too high to accept. So do you accept this hemodynamic? No, I didn't get it. I would recalibrate the lines and get an echo, because I think echo is just more accurate. 
I, I think it's being done now. I yeah. think it's not uncommon in the lab to see some, some Baravarva leak, and when, when you ask the echo people, they see nothing. Uh, so let, let's wait for the echo. We'll, we'll hear from Dr. Atebi while you are preparing your echo. We have uh, a time limited, I, uh, so I, you better rush the echo, yeah. uh, Nabil. Uh, I think I like the hemodynamic. Allah Samhak Abdullah Lenzi. You brought the idea of second valve. The only indication of second valve is supracrystal AI. So if you think that this valve, the 13 millimeter skirt, is all below the annulus, and the AI comes from above, that's an indication of second valve. But here, there is no indication, uh, because it was said three times. I think the valve and valve is out, you post-dilate. If you have to do anything, you just go on post-dilate. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. My comment was the possible etiologies for AR and the possible management. Um, I didn't suggest that this patient needs valve and valve. I suggested that we need to do echo to better understand the mechanisms. So one of the possible ways to treat is valve and valve, but not in this patient. I don't think it's the best option. I personally suspect it's a nodular calcium. And no matter how much you're going to predilate, you will end up with paravalvular leak. The, the ultimate solution would be a plug, in my opinion. Nabil, before Abdurrahman, are we near to uh, echo or no? Because I have five minutes only echo, in the lab. Echo is, yeah, echo is being done now. Can we have a, a camera to the echo? We also flush. Yeah, show us the headline. So, Abdurrahman, Dr. No, I would, I would congratulate uh, Dr. Nabil. Excellent uh, position, excellent result. The hemodynamics are excellent. There is no gradient. EDB is excellent. Uh, there is no way, uh, no uh, indication to do anything uh, further. Just conclude. Okay. And it is little I mean, no valve. Uh, it's going to expand. The... Just wait for another day, two days, you will see that AI is coming down. And, and you'll see the echo. So uh, and I, will I wouldn't intervene at this moment at all. I think I will agree with that without no intervention. But we need an echo to have some, some information before we Wait, get out of the case. The echo, can you focus the echo, uh, the camera to the echo? You know, of course, the good yeah. thing is, he's a hemo he, hemodynamically, he's a stable. You know, I think so this is a great enough moment. time to think I mean, about the other hemodynamically stable. You can wait. You can also do a CT angio and, and get more information post-implant to give you some guidance. So you don't really have to rush. But I think the echo will give us a lot of... Uh, I think we said echo 20 times. We're still yeah, waiting yeah, yeah. for echo. And I, waiting for I think the one last thing, you might revise the CT yeah, that you have done before. And it can decipher something. So if you have some time, going back to the CT images can tell you more information. So you might revise it. If there is a leak that you can see, then you can do it again. Great. You can, we don't need to see it. You can tell us, uh, Nabil, if they have a problem showing us the echo. Fine. Okay. So uh, I need the short axis and long axis across the aortic valve. So, uh, Fawaz and uh, panelists, so uh, if you look at the EDP here, there is no rapid rising in the LV EDP, so... Uh, we are happy with the hemodynamic, yes. completely fine. The best information needed is what's the amount of aortic regurg and barvavar leak by echo. Oh. Fine, it's happening now. And if it was moderate or more, uh, would we tolerate this for this young uh, patient? He's 52 years old. Yeah. Uh, on a positive note, Dr. Fawaz, the QRS has narrowed. So that's really good. What's that? The QRS is narrower. OK. So the left bundle result. So. No TBM. Yeah. Fawaz, I have a question. Do you think the valve choice would have made a difference from the beginning? Throw some color in choosing a balloon expandable instead of self-expandable in somebody who's young? Uh, personally, I, I, I don't think so. I think what's uh, going to make a difference is pre-dilatation in this case. So pre-dilated will be a different story. So the final word from you, Nabil, about the, uh, the echo yeah, gradient echo. of Barabab. Just obtaining a better... Uh, And actually, probably no, predilating would not have prevented well, no, this. Because of the, the, the Can you rotate the echo yeah. screen? Yeah. Pull this. I'm going to pull the big head so you. Slow. We can yeah, see it. Uh, discrete he's aortic the, he's now Anyway, before we hear from you, we'll just try to uh, uh, conclude our session. Then we'll, we'll allow you to, to tell us the final result, uh, Nabil because of sake of timing. Just one, one comment from each panelist. 
Dr. Abdullah, what do you think? Hello. I think from a pre-procedural planning, this is clearly was a difficult case and you should anticipate that it's going to be difficult. I think pre-dilatation uh, pre would have made it a little bit easier by breaking calcium and making positioning better. But this patient, no matter what you would do, you, you would do will end up with some AR. Dr. Adel, in 30 seconds. I think uh, the first uh, lesson is um, uh, getting the enough information before taking the patient to surgery in the first time. The second lesson is not ruling out surgery uh, all altogether. So in this case, I think uh, as um, uh, our colleague mentioned, the interclude or the balloon um, cross clamp uh, that we could deliver cardiopedia, we can cross clamp sure. safely. Great. It could be used. Dr. Hassan. I mean, I just echo what my colleagues say, but I think the, no matter how we should, there's a lot of unmet need. And in the aortic, this is about 20 years out, but I think we should think about newer technologies and innovations like excising the valve percutaneously and using an ultrasound like like to fracture the calcium before implanting valves. Great. Dr. Saleh. Congratulations to Dr. Nabil and the team. Really terrific uh, case. Well done. And I think just the lesson learned here is that uh, radiation or calcification that comes from radiation might behave differently than what we're used to. So kind of expect the unexpected. Great. Yeah, um, uh, certainly it is a difficult case and a uh, complicated one with the uh, significant uh, calcification in a radiated uh, chest. Uh, it is a very good result. Uh, uh, the only uh, I'm different, I would uh, probably uh, I mean, pre it. Uh. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Hamad. Um, very tough case. Congratulations, Nabil and team. You know, given the hostile anatomy, uh, what we've seen so far, it's excellent result, uh, even with, with what we saw in, in you know, aortography. And one of the things that I would do, just echo what everybody said, is just to prepare it, because, uh, you know, a preemptive measure is probably the best for you in these tough cases. And uh, again, well done. Thank you so much, Great. Nabil. So, Nabil, what did it, the echo show? So the echo shows mild, uh, t trivial to mild paravalvular leak, and uh, that, that's it. I mean, the valve is well seated and well functioning. Okay, excellent. And I think it's just, just wait, no need for intervention. I don't think anybody here will vote for, for intervention at this st uh, stage. It's, it's completely accepted. Nabil, thank you very much for demonstrating a very tough uh, case. And this is actually the idea behind the bringing life transmission. We are not interested in a straightforward uh, uh, TAVI. This case is going to create a discussion. And this case is going to change practice for each of us uh, when we face it in the future. Well done. Uh, uh, great uh, skills by your team. And congratulations for a great uh, life transmission. Thank you very much.